Hello, I am Russ. I get to be your informative liaison, I guess you can say. Um, and welcome to the People's Stimulus Check and Stimulus Package Update as of August 29th, 2020. As I discussed earlier, Nancy Pelosi and Mark Meadows had a meeting. It turns out they had a 25-minute phone call that basically went nowhere fast. I mean, what can really be done to advance the Stimulus Package Updates over the phone instead of being in person? Meadows later said that Trump would be open to a $1.3 trillion package, and that's the highest number the Republicans are willing to go. Whereas the Democrats have already started at $3.4 trillion, they have went down to $2.4 trillion, and now they've gone down to $2.2 trillion, which is the actually estimated cost of the CARES Act when it was passed back in March. And the, the Republicans say that the Democrats want want them to agree to a 2.2 trillion dollar so they can actually fill in the blanks because apparently mark meadows says that he asked nancy pelosi what was in this new 2.2 trillion dollar package that she's talking about and nancy pelosi was not willing to give any open details about what was in this package so basically he wants them he believes that the democrats want 2.2 trillion dollars to basically fill in the blank for whatever they would want it for so the republicans are not willing to go for that <clears throat> in fact i even have a video of mark meadows talking his talking about nancy Pelosi. <laughs> so if you please indulge me in watching this video i'll be right back sir is there any uh, uh news you can update us on on the negotiations with the democrats surrounding some of the the COVID aid well, I, I just wanted to let you know, and thank you for bringing it up, Eric. And so I'll share with you uh, details of a conversation that I had with Speaker Pelosi yesterday that I've not shared with anybody else. Spent about 25 minutes on the phone trying to get assistance for not only for the, the people that are hurting, for those that need enhanced unemployment and businesses that are strug struggling, but assistance for our teachers and education, for, uh, for daycare, additional assistance there so that we can deal with this in a real way. And, and so as I had that discussion with her, she made the most compelling uh, and, and contradictory statements that I think I've ever heard. Because what she said was, is that she wants to spend $2.2 trillion, that $1.3 trillion is not enough. But what she went further to say is, is she didn't want to give any of the details uh, on what, how she would spend that $2.2 trillion. And so when I said, well, what would that mean for education? I'm not gonna tell you. What is that going to mean for state and local help? I'm not gonna tell you. You're supposed to trust the Speaker uh, of uh, the United States with uh, the hardworking American taxpayer dollars. I can tell you, it's not her money. It's the people that are watching right now. We're going to be good stewards of that. And as we look at that, it's, it's critically important that we find some solutions. There's been one person who's been willing to act. And I pointed this out to the speaker yesterday. It hasn't been Congress. It's been the President of the United States that makes sure that we have enhanced unemployment. We make sure that eviction protection is there and making sure that we take student loans and say, you don't have to pay those loans during this pandemic time. Uh, it's, it's also been the President of the United States that says, let's give the American people more money in their pocketbook and, uh, right. and with the uh, payroll deduction uh, tax deferral. I and so uh, he's acting when Congress won't. I got only about 20 seconds or so. So are you going to get a deal? Do you feel that they're, they're willing to make the negotiation to come to a deal or no? I'm not optimistic that we're going to get a deal. Nancy Pelosi would rather play politics than focus on the people. This president is going to focus on the people. So we're going to look at additional executive actions. And welcome back. Let's see here. At the end of Meadows, at the, as you notice, at the end of the, the video, Meadows said about the president is looking to do additional executive actions. Pelosi said, "What? Wow!" Said, "What good would the Republican skinny bill do? Their skinny bill, like I said, it originally started at one trillion dollars, and now it has gone down to half a trillion dollars." And even though they say the Trump administration is going to go up to $1.3 trillion, there's, that doesn't make it, I mean, what good is that, is that going to do for the people? Because 
as we all know, as, as long as Republican stays in office, they're going to give all the rich people, all the ones that make $400,000 or more a year, all the tax breaks. Where all the middle class, the ones below them, are going to get stepped on or walked on for the rest of their life. This has actually been a proven fact. If, you haven't been, if you've watched the economy as it goes, I mean, you, you see all these big businesses out there getting all the tax cuts and tax credits. Well, their employees end up paying for them in the first place. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't support big business that would actually step on their employees. I support businesses that actually will work with their employees and, be, and make them a valued member of their staff. I also support people that actually will help out other people. I mean, I know there's an independent running out there for president besides Biden. And I hear they both, Biden and this independent individual, I can't remember what her name was, is basically out there to help out the people whereas we keep hearing trump talking about a payroll tax de deferral and we all know the payroll tax deferral will probably most employers will not do that because they do not want to give their employees a tax bill at the end of the year this is what the payroll tax deferral will do because it'll take away your social security and medicare wages and give you a tax bill for 2021 so unless of course you decide to vote Trump back into office and in which case if you do then uh, I still wouldn't do the payroll tax deferral because that doesn't actually sound like it's a really good idea and in fact I don't really approve I don't really approve of any of Trump's so far executive orders I mean come on extended unemployment for three weeks and from the FEMA disaster relief fund and look what Lur Hurricane Laura has done to Louis Louisiana and Texas thus far and FEMA has no money to help out with what has happened with this hurricane because President Trump has drained their disaster relief fund. Yes, $44 billion is a lot of money, but there's other ways to do it that could get approved by Congress to get the stuff done. I mean, first and foremost, I hate to say this, but we need to replace Nancy Pelosi as a lead Democrat because in the USPS bill, as we all know, she basically said that... Uh, she would not put an extension of unemployment in there and she would not put a second stimulus check in the USPS bill. Oh, and that she would not vote for standalone bills. And yet the USPS bill was exactly that, a standalone bill, and that was it. So we already know Nancy Pelosi is basically full of crap and she's a liar. There are a few uh, key dates we got to watch out for. The first one is September 1st. Because Meadows, as well as uh, Mnuchin, are going to be testifying in front of Congress about whether the American people need more stimulus or not. And this whole month of August is going to show the Congress that without the stimulus that we've been getting, that the economy has been getting worse. And then let's see here. Most likely they will basically blame Pelosi and Schumer for the stalled negotiations, though. Instead of taking responsibility for themselves, because that's just how Republican and Democrats work, do they point fingers at each other and blame each other for their shortcomings? Now, another key date is September 4th. This is when the Board of Labor statistics will release the jobs report. As we've been noticing the past couple of weeks, we've been varying between about 900,000 people applying for unemployment to 1.2 million people applying for unemployment so we our unemployment rates are actually increasing not decreasing because businesses are too afraid to open up because liability protection is not covering them they the, I guess they the big businesses want and so they're afraid to actually open doors because of they don't want to give COVID to customers or to their employees so we have our unemployment is skyrocketing and on the, like I said, on the payroll tax deferral, the IRS said that the companies taking part in this would have to have their employees pay it back. Okay, so this is where the payroll tax deferral thing comes in. Basically, they said that they'd have to have their employees pay back the payroll tax deferral between the months of January and April of 2021 through their payroll. So basically, you get a big paycheck now, and then from January, February, March, and April of next year, you lose that much money so i hope my company does not decide to participate in the payroll tax deferral because i will refuse to let them to ha let them leave my social security medicare taxes in because they need to be taken out to keep our social security alive 
and so basically that is that's basically all the time I have for right now and all the notes I have but as more information comes across my eyes and my ears I will be more than happy to have it come across your eyes and your ears so you can actually know what's going on with our politicians and with any stimulus packages and negotiations therefore until then you guys have a magnificent Saturday and I will broadcast a weekend report for you guys tomorrow as well to let you know any new updates that come across me until then have a wonderful Saturday and I will broadcast again to you tomorrow bye